Welcome back to Ring Fit Adventure. Today we've got another mini game guide. It's the game that in my opinion has the best of the pun names, it's Squattery Wheel. This is one of those mini games that's so easy to pick up, but so difficult to master. So I'm gonna go through all of the stuff that you need to make sure that you're doing it properly. Technique, cues, and tips. Sounds good? Well, let's get into it. The Squattery Wheel itself is a game that requires you to mold pottery clay into the shapes that the robot requires by pressing in on the ring con to make the shape. And this uses half squats to raise the ring up and down. Scoring is based on how close the shape is to the template. You have 60 seconds to mold your pot. That's it. Simple concept, that's why it's so easy to pick up. It gets tough over time though. When you press in on the horizontal ring con, it makes the clay thinner so you use it to shape the required area and moving up and down requires not only a half squat but holding in place sometimes to get the clay into the right shape. And pressing in on one area, much like with real pottery, shifts the volume slightly and makes the other parts regrow in size so it's easy to get a low to mid score but hard to get a perfect. The only thing more difficult than getting an S rank in this game is not making Patrick Swayze jokes through the entirety of this video. Anyway, that's basically how the game works for both novice and advanced, with advanced just having more complex shapes to sculpt. So let's look at the movement mechanics and make sure we're moving as best as possible. So Squattery Wheel is a squat heavy mini game that requires a lot of holding in certain positions during the squat. Now, what does that mean? That means that we're gonna be doing a lot of squats, okay? So I've already done a video on squat form, but if you've not watched that already, that's totally fine. We're gonna go through the bluff notes here. So what does that mean? Feet shoulder width apart, nice proud chest, and we're going to break out our knees and our hips at the same time. We're gonna sit back down, we're gonna hold the ring. Well, we're gonna hold the ring in a different position, but the point is, is that you come down so that your thighs are parallel to the ground, and then you push through the heels to stand back up, and that's your general squat. So we're gonna do that from the side now. Break at the knees and the hips, sit back into it, thighs parallel to the ground, and push back through to the top. That's the general squat. Now there's also a press technique as well. So ring horizontal and our elbows flared out at a 45 degree angle and we press in. And that's what we're doing. We're pressing in. We're holding, we're pulling out. We're holding, we're pulling out. That's the essentials of it. If you tense your arms, you get a little bit of better work on your biceps and your brachioradialis as well, which is really cool. So essentially the combination of the squat and the ring press is what we're gonna be needing. So it's combining those two. So we come down and we're pushing or we're standing up or we're holding at certain positions. The point is, is that you need to make sure that you're combining both of them and you'll be able to do everything you need for the squat. So the squat uses a lot of glutes, quadriceps and hip flexors, and you're gonna be using your biceps, deltoids and your brachioradialis for your presses as well. So there's a lot of work in the squat through your wheel. Now, if at some point you are struggling, you can grab a stool and you can use it to sit back down onto. As long as you've got the right range of motion, you can get to the bottom. That's really gonna help on some of those ones where you've got a lot of work to do at the bottom of the sculpt. Now, let's look into some specific tips for this mini game. So the leg strap is always an issue when it comes to squats in Ring Fit Adventure. I completely understand this, but I can confirm that for the squattery wheel, it definitely helps if you move your leg strap just a little bit down towards the knee and then retighten it make sure that it works there because then it's going to start picking up the movement a little bit quicker. And what we can do there is it means that it's gonna be a little bit more sensitive. So what this means is that you can do those precise parts a little bit better. And it means that you're gonna have more control over those bits, which is the difference between an A and an S in advanced. The main trouble here is going to be the holding and build up of lactic acid and tension in the legs midway, so managing that by standing up occasionally is really going to help. Keep breathing steadily as oxygen is a key factor in the body removing lactic acid, but if you're struggling with the tension, standing up quickly and doing some of the higher parts of the clay can give you enough of a break to help quickly get back into those nitty gritty parts at the bottom. So keep breathing and rest your legs by standing where you can. This sounds like a given, but pay attention to where you're moving the clay. When you press in on one area, the clay gets redistributed to other areas. So do the areas where you need to make the biggest indents first and then work from there. Making impressions on those larger areas first will make it easier to see the shape that you are making, which makes the fine tuning easier down the line. There aren't really markers to see how far in you need to go, which is where some of the difficulty of this game comes. So use your best judgment and account for the fact that the areas shrink and grow during your sculpt. 
If you really want nice, smoother surfaces on your pot, which seems to be the difference between those really, really high scores, rapidly moving up and down from the squat while squeezing the ring con is the way forward. It doesn't have to be too intense a press or a movement, but the fast movements with the press gives those smoother, rounded edges, which is what you need for more accuracy. My final tip is that once you're good with your shape, you can actually press the Y button to end the session. Sometimes people let this run out through the entire 60 seconds, but you don't need to. Naturally, the two main exercises you want to practice here are the squat and the front press, as these make up the two main parts of the minigame, but certain other areas are going to help as well. Chair pose is definitely good for managing lactic acid buildup, and does use similar movement mechanics to the squat, and hip lift is good for working the opposing muscles to the squat. Long term, this will make the movement work better, as your agonist and antagonist muscles are going to be in better shape. And that's the Squattery Wheel. It's a really fun mini game that can really test your legs, your endurance, and your eyesight, frankly. As I said at the start, this is easy to pick up, but hard to master. It is still a great mini game with a good leg and endurance benefits and changes enough each time to continually bring challenge to your sessions. So my initial edit of this video actually had a bit about me not being able to beat my first ever attempt at it back in 2019, but during a normal play session, just a few hours before this video goes live, I actually got S rank on advanced. So using these tips, so practice definitely works is what I'm saying here. If you're a fan of this mini game, let me know in the comments and let me know which mini game you want me to cover next. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more incoming Ring Fit content. I've been Master Trainer Peter and I'll see you soon.